Is there a difference between a person's possible contentment um, if, for example, they spend a lot of time in a, in a busy city rather than what you, your experience in you know, remote Himalayan mountains? Well, you know, the conditions of life, they are not uh, absolute determinants, but they certainly you know, keep on you know, the, the input, sensory input, the, the life experience input, the emotional interaction, interpersonal input, keeps on coming. And if those are of a, of a way that is uh, well, somehow putting, setting you off balance. You know, if, say, you are in an in a, in environment where only greed matters, or an environment where only violence matters, or in, in a situation of, of conflict, or war, or aggressivity, or, or genocide. So, when one of those what we call mental toxins that really undermine your happiness, that basically uh, animosity or hatred, uh, craving, or arrogance, or jealousy, if it keeps on being imported because of the outer circumstances, then you, you sort of, you know, there's a contagion, and if you don't, if you don't function like that, then there's a kind of, it's constantly, uh, you know, some kind of, I would say aggression, but it constantly uh, goes against what you would like to be. So it's kind of possible that to a lesser level, a, a place in our time where, where maximum scattering activities, distractions. And, you know, I was in Times Square while in New York with a Tibetan friend of mine, and he was looking at all those flashing things. He said, and he said, they are trying to steal my mind. He said. So there's a lot of, of that happening. So it can be uh, certainly you know, destabilizing in terms of finding some balance. That's why, you know, the, look at this beautiful sky, you know, that imagine we're just sitting there in the nature environment and you want to cultivate, say, attention, loving kindness. It's easier. Now, ideally, if you have a real inner you know, strength, then you can keep that anywhere, anytime. But but that's not, we don't have to be necessarily all the time in this busy condition, but if you are, then you're still okay. But when you, sp when you begin especially, it's, it's important to have those quiet moments, like a athlete that will quietly go in a stadium early morning and, and train, and not just be, be distracted by something else. Otherwise, you are too weak to become strong. Well, you, you would like to get this emotional balance, but there's so much already chaos happening upon you that you don't have even this chance to build up uh, emotional strength because it's constantly you know like in a washing machine so that's the reason why you need at some point to take the time to get the strength so that you can function better like you learn sailing you're not going to learn sailing the first day when it's a big storm you learn that it's a nice fine weather a little breeze and then when you start being comfortable with the sails then you can a little bit stronger wind, and then when you're really a good sailor, you can roll around the world, and sometimes it'll be a big storm, or sometimes not, but you, are, you know that you can get through most of the time. How much would you say altruism makes up your general perception of being happy? I want to just speak about myself, but I think in general, um, I think it's a fundamental factor. The reason is that if you take the opposite, you know, ex exacerbate a feeling of self-centeredness and self-importance, I, I really convinced it makes your life miserable. Because the me, 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 from morning till evening, uh, is an enhanced sort of hypersensitivity to everything that might cause a little bit of, of, of unpleasure, a little bit of, of pleasure. You're so concerned about your feelings, about yourself, and then so vulnerable. Because the world is not going to behave just to fulfill that, those kind of wishes. It's not a, a mail order catalog for your fancies, it doesn't work. So then you make your life miserable. And of course, you are sort of a pain for everyone because you're just concerned about yourself. So it's a loser situation. So I, I, I'm convinced that a, a kind mind, you know, a benevolent mind, first is a much, much, much more balanced and, and, and you know, sort of you a happy way of being. And then, of course, if that's if that's genuine, then you will be perceived by others as a as a nice person, person we like to be with. As, it, as, it, as the Lama says, if you are very angry and very selfish, even your dog will run away. 
you know, forget about human beings. But they don't want to be with someone who's always angry, shouting and doing unpredictable things and something kicking and all that. So that's natural when you feel like to be with people who are sort of kind and open and it's good to be with. I guess so it feels good for yourself. So it's a win-win situation.